Hey everyone, it's Ashley and I'm back with a video. Today we're going to be learning all about how you can take a font and adjust the spacing inside Cricut Design Space. This is also referred to as kerning a font. So kerning a font is just ad adjusting the spacing so that you get the desired result. And if you can hear any noise in the background, currently there's a storm, so hopefully it doesn't disturb this video for you guys. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content. And let's get working on this. We're currently inside the desktop version of Design Space, and what I'm going to do is go to the text section here and click on that. And I'm going to type in a word, and we're going to play around, and that way I can really demonstrate the different features of um, adjusting the spacing and also how to fix some problems that you might find with fonts. So I just selected the word hello and I'm going to make this um, a little bit bigger so that we can take a look at it. And this automatically goes to the Cricut fonts inside the system. If you've downloaded a font, sometimes you'll find that some errors happen more often than if you use something that was already in the system. So I'm going to show you some of the errors that can happen and walk you through that step by step so that you can solve them as you're working. Um, I want to choose a script font for this. So let's go ahead and choose a script font that is a downloaded one from uh, defont.com. So I'm going to choose one called Honey. And this one I have worked with recently and noticed some errors with, so I wanted to show this one to you guys because this is one that I have noticed um, that has problems sometimes. So if you're working on this one, you may notice that first off, when you're starting with a script font, all the letters are separate, but it looks like they're written so that they would be cursive, right? Well, how do you fix that? The first thing would be to, to select it, and then we're going to go up to the top where it says ungroup. And ungrouping, all it does is it takes it and allows you to play with them separately. So let's work on arranging this in a way that it looks like it's written naturally. As you notice, I have all of the letters along this grid system, and I'm using this line here as kind of my basis for making sure that the font is going to look um, it's best. You can play with the letters as much as you want and switch them around so that they look completely different, but I'm going to show you the most standard way to do it first. So you just take your letter and you're going to drag it over, and as you know, this one has a tail here, and we want to make sure that the tail and the letter kind of overlap a little bit, and the reason for that is when you connect them, it's going to look the most natural. So there we go with that one. We're going to drag this one over as well, keeping in mind that we're trying to keep it along this line here. And we're going to click that. As you notice, it really, if you do go too far over, it will show up um, in there. So there's that one. And let's drag another one over. And let's move this one over. So there's our font, and it looks like it would cut it out exactly how you'd like it, right? Well, you would have to go in, let me switch machines here, you'd have to go in and select make it. However, on the mat, it's going to cut it as separate pieces, and that's because we haven't done anything to tell the computer that these need to be connected. So what you're going to do is draw a box around it. You can click attach. Attach would keep it in the position. However, it would still cut them as individual letters. So if you went to the mat, it would still cut them, but they wouldn't be connected yet. So let's go back, and we're going to click Weld. Draw a box around it, click Weld. This is a common problem that you will find if you're using a script font that isn't from Cricut Design Space itself. It's more likely to have this problem. So you would click on the item. Let's go um, back so we can take a look at it. You click on the item, you'll make it larger. Okay, so if you look at it, do you notice here there's a little um, bump out where the letter's connected? So sometimes if you drag your letter a little too far over into um, the previous letter, it will see this as all connected instead of giving it that space. So I'm going to um, go back and let's see. I'm going to go back to where it was ungrouped. 
Okay, so they're currently ungrouped. We're gonna drag and click a box around it and we're gonna make it larger. So this commonly happens if you're not working up pretty close to the fonts. Um, so that's something I just try to keep in mind is to work with the fonts larger just to help myself out a little bit. So I'm gonna pull that one forward just slightly more so you don't see any spots in here. And then I'm gonna move this one over. And that looks like it works. And let's do that one. Okay, now we can draw a box around this and click attach and then click weld. And as you can see, because you're working up closer and you've made sure to not have any like significant overlaps into the empty space there, you're not gonna have problems with it nearly as often. Um, this can still happen even if you do it perfectly. Let me go back really quickly. Okay. And these are all attached. So let's go back and make this smaller. Let's pretend we're working with it very, very small here. And it's already welded. Let's go back to before it was welded so I can show you guys. Okay, so now they're attached. Let's make this small again. Sometimes this happens if you're working with it too small and you're missing pieces that way. So let's click weld. And as you can see, it did the same thing again. So just make sure when you're working on it, my tips would be to work up close to it and to make sure that you didn't have any um, spots where the letters overlapped with each other. Because if they overlap at all sometimes in into the white space, it will create that. And I usually find that ha that is a problem where it fills in the gaps if you're not working close up on the letters. So those are my top two tips if you're coming up with any problems with it. Um, if not, then awesome. It's a great font to work with. Let's try working with some more fonts here and I'm going to explain to you how you can kind of adjust it a little bit and play around with it and have a little bit more fun. So here's a different example. I'm doing something that has multiple words as well as using a different font. I'm using brush script for this one. So what I'm going to do with this one is click ungroup and we're going to work on it by just playing around with it. I want to show you some of the cool features of using the kind of unspacing um, options inside Design Space. So if you're trying to um, play around with letters in the way that a graphic designer would, think about all the different ways that you could adjust each one because there are a lot of ways that you can play with it and have fun and it doesn't have to look, you know, standard the whole way. So one of the first ways to do it, say if you're going to create your, um, your word, first we'll drag down the different pieces here. And I usually work word by word because I find that works the best for um, really getting the style that you like. And just bringing this over and adjusting it. Okay, so there's the first word. What if you want this to look different? This is kind of the standard way of doing it. Well, you could take the first letter and you can make it much bigger and it's kind of a, a fun way to add a little bit of uh, whimsy to it. What if the rest of the word looks still kind of boring to you? Well, you could take that first letter and you can kind of adjust how you do your letters. So it doesn't have to be in the exact same spot. So maybe you um, start your A there and you can also move each individual letter up at an angle. Um, you can move them down if you like how it looks better down. If you want it to look like more natural writing, sometimes the letters move up and down. So there's a lot of different ways that you could um, make it work to make it look a little bit more goofy or fun or, or different. So really how you place each letter is up to you. And it that's kind of the, the neat thing about using a current um, style for fonts. Instead of just using the, if you go up to the top and you use the um, the feature where you adjust the letter spacing you instead of using the letter spacing you can just do it yourself and make it look exactly how you like and it gives you a lot more space to work so there's the the first one and we could do the same thing with this one we could take this one and make this one larger and when you're doing your own spacing as well you can adjust the sizing between the letters so 
even though standard it shows this much spacing in between you can adjust it and make it look completely however you like on your own so there's that one and let's just go in and do kind of the same thing with this one but one of the biggest ways that I see used is to adjust the first letter spacing that tends to be very common and then that way you can really play around with it and there's a ton of different ways so really don't feel limited by whatever you see as an example um, you can play around and just goof around with it and have it mixed up also I tend to like intermixing uh, fonts so if you're doing something that has a lot of text you can take something like this and switch out a whole section of this and say I don't really like it all being cursive so let's switch this to a different font so let's go into text and create the same word craft but let's switch it to a different font so let's take a look so maybe we've decided we don't like how this one looks so we'll go in and delete that and then what if we want to bring this one in and make that part of it? So we could really switch it up and change it up so it looks completely custom and it looks like what you're looking for. And then when you're done and you like the spacing, if you're happy with how the spacing looks, you can go in and um, draw a box around it and then you can just click attach. And then when you're ready for all the pieces to be cut you can go in and, and go a little bit closer just to make sure that you don't have any problems with your font um, making sure it works perfectly then you can click weld and then you can just scroll over and everything looks good to go and now you can play around with the sizing you can cut it and you can do whatever you like to it so those are just some kind of um, tips for how you can make letter spacing work the best for you and I really find that it's very, very fun to play with. The big thing is just keep in mind if you're having any errors with a script font to make sure that you're zoomed in on it and make sure that your um, areas where the letters are touching are not going into the white spaces in between the letters because that's when you're going to have the most problems with it. So hopefully this video helped you guys to understand a little bit more about how to use fonts and font spacing. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them below and let me know if there's any videos that you would like to see because I want to tailor my content towards what you guys are looking for. I hope you're having a great day and check out the cards listed above. There's some really great tutorials all about Cricut Design Space and some fun Dollar Tree DIYs. I'll see you guys later. Bye.